Another week of spring training has come and gone, and so far the biggest storyline surrounding this Red Sox team is just how good and surprisingly good some of the Red Sox prospects have been. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Seat Radio. My name is Corbin, and so far the Red Sox have not lost a spring training game yet. They've tied a couple, but they have not lost any of them. And a big reason for that is because of the performances of a lot of young, talented prospects on this Red Sox team. So what we're gonna do in today's video is go over some of the more surprisingly good showing so far from these prospects, what to look for going forward within certain prospects, and how how the performance of some of these prospects could affect this Red Sox roster come opening day or throughout the 2023 season. But before we get into that, do me a favor, make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well as it helps these videos out a ton and it would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. Let's get into it. We're going to start with my favorite young player in this Red Sox system and my favorite young player in all of baseball, Tristan Casas, because Casas is having a really great spring so far. He's hitting 333 outside of the Northeastern game because that is not considered into stats because it was an exhibition game and he's really driving the ball up the middle, which is a great thing to see. Now, he hasn't taken a, taken a ton of walks so far. In fact, he hasn't taken a single one, but he is putting together good at bats like this one that's probably on the screen right now it was a home run on a 3-2 count against a lefty which is important to note because Casas in the past has struggled with that lefty lefty matchup so to see him putting together good at bats against a lefty and bringing power to lefty lefty at bats is a great sign early on in the spring I'm expecting huge things from Tristan Casas this year I think a lot of people are him performing well in spring training shouldn't really come as a shock to anybody and that's not really what this video is about I just had to mention him because Again, he's a young prospect. He's doing really well so far, but he's not exactly surprising anyone with his performance, and that's a good thing. So let's talk about some guys who are surprising people with their performances and what it could mean for this Red Sox roster. One of the bigger surprises to come out of the first week or so of games at for Red Sox spring training is that Ryan Fitzy Fitzgerald is having another great spring training. He had a really good one last year, but didn't end up cracking the major league roster at all in 2020. However, in 2023, it could be a bit of a different story as there may be room that could be made on this roster for Ryan Fitzgerald. So far this spring, Ryan Fitzgerald has been in five games for the Red Sox and he's hit an impressive 500 during that time. He has four total hits with three of those being extra base hits and he's only struck out twice in those five games. He's being patient at the plate, he's taking walks and he's coming up with some really big hits. So far this spring, he has a walk off, he has multiple doubles, he's doing it all with a mullet and a pearl necklace ryan fitzgerald is making waves at the plate and trying to make a name for himself in spring training for the second year in a row now on the field ryan fitzgerald is basically playing every single position outside a catcher and pitcher he's played all over the infield so far in spring training and for today's game i'm recording thursday morning he's playing the outfield as well so he can play some corner outfield when necessary and taking a look at this red sox roster yes the red sox signed yu chang to be their sort of utility infield type guy but yu chang in my opinion doesn't have a solidified spot on this team he was signed to a really low contract and that could allow the red sox to dfa him very easily or maybe even flip him for some sort of smaller prospect in a trade so i don't think yu chang is solidified on this roster and if ryan fitzgerald keeps hitting the way he's hitting with the swagger that he has and the ability to play anywhere on the field there may be a spot open on this red sox bench for ryan fitzgerald to be that sort of utility type player for this red sox team either way though he is having a fantastic spring training so far and with the roster construction the way it is keep an eye on ryan fitzgerald for the rest of the spring outside of that matthew lugo is also making a bit of a name for himself in spring training this year so far matthew lugo is hitting 429 at the plate with a double and a triple he's been hitting the ball really hard this spring now matthew lugo is a shortstop by trade and has been playing there this spring he was a non-roster invitee still really young he's only 21 years old he just cracked double a last year for a couple of games at the end of the year i'm not going to consider him in the running to be a sort of depth piece short 
shortstop at any point for the Red Sox this year, but it is really nice to see the younger talent on this team be displayed early on in the Red Sox spring training. So in my opinion, Matthew Lugo is a guy to keep your eye on, not for a roster spot, but just to see kind of what the future of this Red Sox team may look like. He's a guy who's probably going to get a lot of late appearances and time at shortstop in double A and maybe even triple A this year as well. So again, not a guy I'm looking for in terms of major league roster spot, but definitely a guy who's impressed me early on and shocked a lot of people. I don't know if a lot of people knew Matthew Lugo's name. Now let's move on to some of the pitching that's been impressive so far this year. Wyatt Mills has been really impressive in my opinion so far really early in a small sample size in spring training. He's got a wind up and release and delivery that looks a lot like John Schreiber. And so far it's been really effective, especially against right-handed hitters because in three innings so far of work for the Red Sox in spring training, Wyatt Mills has not given up a hit. He hasn't given up a walk. He struck out five people and he has not given up a single run. So Wyatt Mills is absolutely shutting guys down right now in spring training. As for the bullpen, how Wyatt Mills could affect that, he could definitely earn a spot on this Red Sox bullpen. In my opinion, there's at least two spots up for grabs. You got to think, right? Caleb Ort's not a guarantee. Zach Kelly's not a guarantee. Cutter Crawford isn't a guarantee for this Red Sox bullpen. So there are a couple spots open in this Red Sox bullpen. And if Wyatt Mills continues to pitch the way he's pitching in spring training, be as effective on the mound as he's been so far in spring training, this is definitely a guy to keep your eye on to see if he makes a major league roster come opening day. And finally, the guy who's really surprised me the most so far this spring and has made waves in terms of Red Sox fandom, who guys are talking about right now in spring training, it has to be Emmanuel Valdez. Emmanuel Valdez came over to the Red Sox in the Christian Vasquez trade, and we knew his hit tool was really impressive, but he's really shown that he can hit the ball hard early on in spring training. He has three hits so far, hitting about 286 in total, but in that Northeastern game, Valdez had a monster bases clearing double, and recently he hit an absolutely mammoth home run. He's putting some really great swings together. He's hitting the ball really, really hard so far this spring. One thing that's also has people talking is the fact that he's being more patient at the plate. Something that was really concerning with Valdez's game was that he didn't walk a lot and struck out a ton, right? He was sort of an all or nothing type hitter. So far this spring, he's taken four walks and struck out four times, meaning he's getting on base just as much as he's striking out, which is exactly what the Red Sox have been wanting to see from Emmanuel Valdez. Obviously, you could probably cut down on those strikeouts a little bit. It's still early in the spring, still getting used to hitting live pitching and stuff like that. So hopefully it does go down. But Emmanuel Valdez right now has an on base percentage of 545. He's getting on base at a higher clip than he has throughout his entire minor league career. And again, super small sample size. So take all of this with a grain of salt. But Valdez is really impressing at the plate early on in spring training. And it has a lot of people talking about whether or not he should be on the roster come opening day as a second base replacement. And speaking of second base, one thing that has really stood out to me in Valdez's game so far this spring training has been his defensive ability. It's been in question for a while, right? He's been moved around position to position because his defense just really isn't that good anywhere. But so far in spring training, aside from one singular play, he's been fairly decent at second base. He hasn't been a gold glove candidate or anything so far, but he's been fairly solid. And that's a really, really good sign. In terms of how Valdez could affect this Red Sox roster, if he keeps hitting the way he's hitting in spring training and does end up having a fairly solid spring training at second base defensively, he could be a guy who's considered to be on this Red Sox bench. Now, I don't think he's going to end up on the bench, especially come opening day, mostly because if I'm the Red Sox, I want to put him in AAA a little bit longer to see if what he did, what he's doing in spring training carries over to the regular season, especially defensively. But at some point this season, especially if there is any injuries to the middle infield or anything like that, I could definitely see Valdez making his way up to the major leagues at some point. And if he keeps hitting the way he's hitting, he may end up as a sort of staple on this Red Sox team in 2023. Midway through the season, Christian Royal, you know, sore hamstring. He's out for a week. 
Emmanuel Valdez could step in and really make some waves at the major league level. So in my opinion, Emmanuel Valdez is the guy right now to keep your eye on. He has been absolutely lighting the world on fire and really start and really has people talking in terms of what this Red Sox team could look like. Outside of that though, there are still a ton of guys who are doing really well. In fact, the Red Sox in total look really good so far this spring. Again, they have not lost a game. The pitching looks great. The offense looks good. Worcester may not lose a game this year because we haven't seen a ton from the major league roster, but it is fun to see these sort of prospects and guys who normally don't get playing time really shine in spring training. So let me know in the comment section down below, which of these guys are you focusing in on the most and which of these guys do you think could make an impact on this Red Sox roster, if any, right? Also, is there anyone that I did not mention that you want to talk about? Is there anyone who has been impressing you in spring training that you really think could make a difference on this 2023 team? Let me know all your thoughts on prospects doing really well for the Red Sox down below. As always, if you made it to the end of this video, do me a favor, make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Again, if you're new here, we talk Red Sox content like almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys hit the like button on this video as well. It helps these videos out a ton and it would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one and I will see you in the red seats.